Welcome into another Otago Bolts career mode episode. Exciting news, Fulcher got selected by the New Zealand ODI team. He has been in very excellent form and he's had a debut. So we'll go over the itinerary for the Zimbabwean tour because you guys haven't been here for the last while. We're going to showcase this first. So they, Tim K had a debut as well. Um, he's played a couple of test matches there, but 5 for 44 on debut, along with Williams, uh, one for 29 there and pretty much 518 for five with Foxcroft 210. I just can't see why he can't do that for Otago, but never mind. Um, it's good to see him in really good form. 33 fours and a six. And yeah, 352 out in response. Uh, there in the second innings, win by an innings of 15 runs with Williams three for 77 and K three for 77 as well to cap off a good debut. Next game was here, and pretty much a 50 for our Sutherland. Cole Jamison getting 77 handy runs. Zimbabwe up for 186 with uh, Williams 2 for 44 there. K with a pretty economical spell. New Zealand 297 in that innings. Foxcroft with another uh, score of 64. And 193 all out with K picking up another 3 for. So that will bring the run to the run of the um, test matches. Now the one day international, 356 for three with Garside top scoring with 170, but Fred Sutherland bringing up another 100. Fred's average has creeped over 40 now. It's getting better all the time. What a career that looks like at the moment. <laughs> look at the age, 24. He could play another 10 seasons at this top level. His stats are going to look incredible by the end of his career. But, uh, yeah, very good contribution there. And Zimbabwe, 253 for 9 with K1 for 27. Very good stuff. And Williams, uh, 2 for 60. So the two Otago guys opening the bowling, effectively, for um, New Zealand. And then the next match, exciting stuff. Fulcher, 1 for 37 on debut. A pretty respectful debut, I felt. Uh, K and Williams, very economical at the top. 2 for 38 and 2 for 32, respectfully. And the run chase ended with Glenn Phillips, another um, player for us. 100 off 85 deliveries and 21 of 27 for Fred in that particular innings. Was it done to us effectively? It's really thinned our depth, as you can see. We'll just go to the coach and physio. Look how many players are away at international duty. And we're probably going to lose probably a deer to the 20 over so because it did say being picked up by an Australian franchise. More importantly, let's get to our results now. Like, we've been okay in the... Um, one day cup we've been a lot better um obviously you guys are last here for the auckland defeat we beat auckland uh by five wickets in this game restricted them to 260 for nine uh kitson 243 truscott two for 50 Fulcher four for 58 we're gonna miss him in the one uh the t20 campaign i think and yeah in response uh 261 for five with s we're bringing up at 126 of 137 deliveries 16 fours three sixes Cox was really good for his 68 of 65, and Adir, 26 there. Hopper, 3 for 39, and everyone else sort of didn't really trouble us too much. Beaten by Wellington by 23 runs in this game. Two things to note in this game. We let them get away from 157 for 5. 303 for 7, uh, 50s to Johnson, 53 of 48, 7 boundaries there, and 79 of 62 for Roundtree on debut, 8 fours, 2 sixes. Good cameo from McDonald at the end. Uh, we had Denver and Bentle getting um, uh, close to 50 and just supporting um, people and partnerships. Bowling was relatively okay, like 2 for 40 for Fulcher, 2 for 55 for Kitson, 1 for 16 for Foxcott, but just a little bit on the expensive side. And in the run chase, we were gone um, at 134 for 6, but um, Foxcroft and Fulcher first and foremost built a partnership. Then Fulcher took over pretty much, and Truscott, Paul, and Kitson to an extent supported Fulcher as long as they could, with him ending up 79 not out of 86 deliveries, 11 fours, 2 sixes in his innings. Nathan Smith, the former Otago Bolt, 5 for 37. And, yeah, we've got the um, Auckland game now. We won this by... Uh, Auckland won this by 59 runs. Yeah, keep them well contained, uh, pretty much, with Truscott, 3 for 53. Uh, 4 for 61 for Fulcher. You can see he's just a really good wicket-taker. Gave Bickerton an opportunity. Bold economically. He has bold economically in the games that we've given him this season. We're really working hard on 
whenever we get the chance to do trainings, just go through his defensive technique, his aggressive technique. We've just got to keep at him. So I think if we get two really good quality spinners, Fulcher's going to be away probably for a while in the limited over stuff, but Bickerton's got to really step up in this campaign um, coming up in the 20 over stuff because he's our specialist spinner. Uh, 2 for 51 for Fulcher there. We keep them really under control. Chapman and O'Donnell getting 50s, of course. A lot of starts in that innings for Auckland. And then we only can manage 206. Uh, Cox 82 at the top. Of 75 deliveries, 12 fours. Fulcher and Truscott getting some 30s down below, but that's not enough from the other uh, batsmen there. And then um, we beat Central Districts in a thriller. 286 for 9. Um... They posted Lacey 89 off 80, 5 fours, 2 sixes. Mitchell 53 off 64, 9 fours there. But a good bowling at the uh, death, uh, especially from Mark Adair, 3 for 67. Uh, we had 2 for 60 for Truscott. Bickerton 1 for 44, good stuff. Kitson 1 for 42. Fulcher a wee bit expensive, but he picked up another 2 for. Hamish Rutherford turns back the clock. 109 off 107 balls, 16 fours, 1 six. Brought up 5,001 day runs in his career. Uh, 37 years of age. And he delivers um, that performance there. Really stoked that he's still able to do that. And on debut, Max Turner brought up 115. An incredible pressure situation. And then Fulcher finished it off with a classy 27 off 18 with 5 boundaries. Randall 4 for 64. Bowled really good. Low 2 for 55. Really good game. Of our cricket and very valuable one for the Otago side. And then we played Canterbury in the final game before we start the games today. 255 for 8 uh, with Turner again, 60 off 67, 10 boundaries. Kelly batted basically right through, had to guide the team to that score. Got 79 not out for 112 deliveries, 10 boundaries himself. Fulcher, Adair, and Truscott well supported there. Uh, 4 for 41 for Fish, a young and upcoming bowler for Auckland. Not Auckland, uh, Canterbury. Uh, and Ferguson, 1 for 57. 2 for 51 for Nuttall. Then a good bowling performance against Canterbury. Got them out for 207. With Boyle at the top, 89 of 95. The only one that looked real threatening to getting the score for Canterbury. But uh, good bowling performance again from Vulture, 4 for 39. 1 for 45 for Bickerton. Really happy with that performance again. 3 for 39 for Kitson. One, one for True Scott and Adia. So that puts us in a good position uh, in the One Day Cup where we sit in third place. Obviously, want to keep pushing some of these other teams the best we can. But yeah, we'll be back with the team, guys. It's going to be a very interesting uh, team and very interesting 20 over campaign to see how we go. So here's our team. It's been severely tested with um, our depth. Uh, with a lot of players away. Finn Allen opening um, with Max Turner. We're going with the um, young 18-year-old. So his development is going to have to be accelerated a wee bit, just with people away. Uh, Hamish Rutherford at three. Cox at four. Big um, season for Cox in terms of the 20-over trophy. Want him to improve that 19.5. We'll get into the mid-20s. We've got Taylor at five. Aswood moves down to an unfamiliar role at six. Got Mark Adair at 7. He's been a wee bit out of form of late, Mark Adair, just with the ball. Uh, just a wee bit expensive in that, but he's still a valuable asset to our team, as you can see, the Otago career. Uh, very valuable um, limited overs bowler for us. Then we've got Hall, um, bowled good in the 20 over campaign last season. We've got the experience of Jacob Duffy um, opening up with Kitson and Bickerton. Huge campaign for Bickerton. I can't emphasize that enough. We need a spinner. Just have a bit of variation in our attack. And Bickerton is going to have to go through the campaign till Vulture gets back. So let's get stuck in, shall we? And see how things pan out. So Tiger have lost the toss and been put into bat. So we are going to see Max Turner with our Finn Allen at the top. Need a good score. Need at least 160 to be competitive. Good to see Finn Allen get amongst the runs in this campaign. It's a good shot from uh, Finn Allen. He's had a few opportunities for New Zealand here and there. Obviously, our top keeper, Phillips, is um, there at the moment. Uh, just in a bit better nick than Finn Allen. So he won a good campaign as well to pressure uh, Phillips. Let's turn us off the mark. 
and 20 over crickets. Yeah, and just through our local youth academy program too. I'm happy that we've picked up a few guys from there, like Kitson and uh, Turner. It's like, that's what we might have to rely on over the next few while, just obviously not being able to sign too many players with having our budget stretched to the limit every season. 31 without loss. Graves. Graves will pick up the wicket of Turner. So Turner doesn't get too much on 20 over debut. We bit a turn. Out for 14, off 14. Brings Hamish Rutherford in. Very experienced. Had a good 20 over campaign last season. Be looking to replicate something similar again. Average around the mid 20s, and that will be acceptable because we're going to have a couple of experienced guys, obviously, in that order. Finnellan goes for 20 off 21, and Targo 40 for 2 now. Good shot from Hamish Rutherford. Finds the gap, gets it away for 4. Of course, um, at the back end of the season, we'll give Hamish Rutherford his 100th first-class game for Otago as well. Probably be maybe the last game if we're not in contention. And Rutherford has been dismissed. He's gone for 9 off 7. Just lost our way a bit. 49 for 3 at the moment. And this has been good bowling from the Central District side. As Cox gets that away for 4. 57 for 3 now. Good shot from Jeffrey Cox. Gets that away for four. It's been relatively quiet this season. That trend continues. He's gone. He's gone for 13. Brings Asper to the crease. And just Otago just can't build any momentum. It's just a case of not being able to um, establish any significant partnerships. Like I said, the batting's a bit frail with Fulcher gone now. Like he is just such a useful number eight. Taylor's gone for three now, so it's not a good uh, display of batting so far from the Volts. Can the all-rounder, can the Irish all-rounder find some batting form in this campaign? And 73 for five, Otago. Want at least 120 just to be competitive I'm not expecting big things in this 20 over campaign for some reason just just missing that class you know like if we can get some of them back would be good like i don't think Fulcher will make the other squads we'll see aswad skied that how far has that gone that's going to be caught he's gone for six so 77 for six otago and and a lot of pressure now to just bat out the innings and get something on the board. Gonna have to come out firing with the ball and just get it into good areas. Hall's gone for four and it brings Jacob Duffy in. 81 for seven. Jacob Duffy's a very experienced campaigner. 84 for seven. Only five overs remain. Still got one batter. Um, really in Mark Adair. Good shot. Gets that away for 4. 92 for 7 now, Otago. Just trying to get this innings kick-started. Good shot again. Run rate's up to 6 per over. And the 100's up. That's good. That's good for Otago. Probably a surface at 160 is going to be the par. and We're nowhere near that. 105 for 7. Crunch down the ground from Jacob Duffy. That's a maximum. He can, he, he's shown the odd innings in the career so far. And he can hit the cricket ball um, when he gets in. That's a good shot from Mark Adair. That's gone all the way for 6 again. A big over for the Otago side. 119 for 7 after 18. New all-time record partnership at the ground for Dunedin for these two. Jacob Duffy, he has been dismissed. He's gone for 17. Good shot. Cleaned up. Kits in. Four runs. And he's gone. Just want to make sure we bat out the last few deliveries if we can. 
on 24 for 9. Even if we get 4 or 5 off the over, as long as we give ourselves some opportunity. 4 off 3 deliveries off this over so far. And we've been caught. 128 away out of 19.4 overs. Mark Adair top scoring with 30 there, but good performance from it. The Central District side with Graves 3 for 29 and Lennox 3 for 31. So let's see what we can respond with. See if we can get it into good channels and get some early breakthroughs. Kits in. Young Otago lad. Just starting to come through the ranks. Been in the um, squad for a while. Jacob Duffy. This is his preferred stuff, the limited over stuff. He's gone and got an early breakthrough. A wee bit of an interesting position for Central Districts at the moment, but if they bat 20, they win. But we've got them three down on the extra over with our kits in. It's 43 for three after six. Uh, we'll trust um, young Bickerton to um, do a job here. One over for 10. A wee bit expensive for my liking, but. It is what it is. Yeah, just if I knew Falter would be called up this season, I would have probably kept Daryl Mitchell, but that's what it is. 62 for three. Another wicket. Okay, we needed that wicket. We need to strike a few times here, actually, just to get some pressure back on. Bickerton, two overs, none for 13 at the moment. And Bickerton will get a wicket here. So give him a wee bit of confidence. Not bad from the leggy. Central Districts are on a wee bit of bother here. 78 for 6. This is good from the vaults. This just got something on the board at the end of the day. And their bowlers are doing a job at the moment. We need to get the wicket of Clarkson though. And Bickerton will bowl out. And he might pick up another wicket here. This is good from the leggy. It's just tidied things up after his very expensive first over. We've got the wicket of Randall. Trying to bowl our best um, bowlers here. Uh, Mark Adair will have to come in for the attack now. Probably have to bowl part-timer for an over. Mark Adair will get a wicket as well. This is good. 84 for 8 uh, Central Districts. Mark Adair adds to his very impressive... Um, Stuff at the moment. Uh, we'll get Kitson in for the attack. 84 for 8. Clarkson's still there, but he's running out of partners. 90 for 8 after 15. And this is good from Mark Adair. The field placement's spot on. And Central District's 90 for 9. And they need 39 to win. Jacob Duffy back into the attack is over 25 of 18 Clarkson runnable 25 and the game is over as Mark Adair picks up his third wicket he surely should be man the match he was a pivotal part of this performance but a good all round bowling performance has got us a good start in the 20 over um, competition the super smash very disciplined 2 for 20 for Bickerton really pleased with that 2 for 26 for Kitson 3 for 12 for Mark Adair and 2 for 17 for Hall as well. So very low scoring game, but we have got our campaign underway positively. So Leeson, good to see Trust Scott improve his defensive bowling. I'll come back with another cut here, guys, um, just with a squad um, naming for the next game. Okay, guys, we are back. Before we go any further, we do have um, Adair and K being picked up in the Australian 20 over league again uh obviously the big bash uh Falter has returned more importantly from international dude to fill the all-rounder role that is something very crucial to know uh obviously did he take part in that other game he didn't um Ravindra was back K got a, another match there as well pretty much had a few matches and he's just throwing his craft at the level and Sutherland got a few runs as well 82 off 64 and he's just continuing to climb up. We'll just take a look at the international rankings as well. 
to showcase the community New Zealand. We're at second in the test matches. We are eighth in one dayers, and we are second in the So the batsmen test matches. Fred is sixth ranked at the moment. Uh, in one day international cricket, Fred Sutherland snuck in twelfth there. And in twenty over international cricket, Fred is in eighth place. So he's a quality player. And of course, we had Dion Harahan as well um, as a youngster. Uh, we'll just have a wee look at the bowlers to see if we do have anyone on top of this. Cole Jamison's there, of course. Do we have anyone inside those rankings? Cole Jamison again. And just unfortunately, no one from the Otago side there. But that's okay. Anyhow, our depth's been tested big time. Um, we've gone with pretty much a similar team. We've got the two spinners operating in this game um, at the moment. So Finn Allen, Turner, Rutherford will get another opportunity. Cox at four, Taylor at five, Aswood at six. Falter will um, try to just develop his 20-over career. Uh, Hall at eight, Duffy at nine, Kitson at ten, and Bickerton at eleven to make up our lineup. It's a pretty good Canterbury side, you'd have to say. Just, once again, a good quality bowling attack. Very experienced names, and uh, Nichols and McClure in that order, along with Cole McConchie. Got some exciting young players in Wiggins uh, and Travis. And Boyle's been around a little while as well. We are going to... Man, what the condition's like. We are going to bat first again. We're going to get some tough runs, um, hopefully, and try to defend um, again. Freer Fraser sheet continues to impress. Yeah, he's been been around the scene a long, long time. He debuted in 2017. He's in his 10th season almost. Uh, fortunately, Max Turner, he's going to be out without troubling the scorers. He's gone for a golden duck, in fact. Hamish Rutherford. Looking to steady the ship early on. Come on, Finn. you got to get some... Um, some runs under your belt, just so we can get you back into the New Zealand uh, squad. It's a good shot. He's been really good for a Tiger Finn Allen, apart from that, like he's just did, did a good job in all formats where he's batted, filled certain roles. He's open, he's batted in the middle order, and like his best stuff has come in the first class game, where he's, I think he's got about 1350s uh, for us. No hundreds, of course, I'd love him to get a hundred. As soon as he gets that first one, he may be able to get a couple consistently. He's played a lot of cricket now, and let's see him deliver. Um, more and more on that potential. Only still 27 years of age, I believe, Finn Allen. Yeah, he's still got a lot of cricket behind him. He's got 2050s in his career. Their average of 31, but the Targo stats are pretty positive. Love to improve his uh, one-day average a little bit. Like his 20-over stuff's been quite good. Got no complaints there. Baker to uh, Rutherford. Rutherford has been caught for 13 of 10 deliveries. So Cox down the ground. That is four. Targo 40 for two. Good shot from Cox. Stretches out and gets another boundary. Getting into a stride. Three fours off his thrust. Three deliveries. And he's been dismissed. That's so disappointing from Cox. Got Taylor in now. Young Marcus Taylor. Finn Allen's just throwing his wicket away as well, so we've just got ourselves into an awkward position again. So Taylor and um, Aswood will have to um, rebuild this innings, and like I said, the batting's quite frail. Like, it's Fultra's really a batsman that is still developing at the level. Just going to have to get around that 125-130 mark again and try to bowl well. Try and give ourselves... Every opportunity to uh, win the, the second match. Good shots from Aswood. I think he's going to be valuable in that middle order. We've got so many opening batsmen. We've got a luxury in that position. Taylor has pretty much holed it out. Uh, 73 for 5 now. This is where Adir come into the last game and really batted well. So maybe the Jeek Vulture may fill that role for us. Good shots. Cleanly hit. Good to have a good few quality all-rounders around, like obviously Fulcher becoming an international cricketer of late and Adir being around the international scene a long time. 88 for 5. 
It's Fraser Sheets. It seems economical. 89 for 5 after... Uh, this is the 16th over now. Very similar to last time. Just kind of had to craft out a score. Might have to launch a wee bit in these last few. Try and get a lucky over or two. It's too short from uh, Corbin. And that's been punished from Fulcher. It's a bit of a lucky streaky edge. That's gone away. 100 for 5. Yeah, even though it's a chance, uh, Vulture has placed that nicely for four. 105 for five after 18. Just need a good, strong finish here. It's a good shot. Cleanly hit. 113 for five after 19. Can this be a productive over for the side? Oh, that's a key strike. Fraser Seat coming and doing a job. 13 for 6. Playing a miss. It's good over for Sheet so far. But that's a good shot from Hall. Gets us close to that 120 mark. And he has... has have we crossed there? Don't know if we did. No, it didn't. 118 for 7. Canterbury have restricted us to with Aswood, Fulcher and Finellan grinding us to a score. Is it going to be enough? I don't think it will be. Only 20 over International Sword. New Zealand get to 180 for 9. Uh, Fred getting 59. Williams and KK, I think, is on a 20 over International debut. So we'll keep an eye out for that. It's getting goes in all formats. But yeah, Fred uh, Sutherland, just, his career is just going up leads and bounds. He's got great career averages at the moment. But yeah, let's see if we can bowl with discipline and get some early wickets. Kitson, he will get a key wicket of Henry Nichols. He's still a very good domestic cricketer, Henry Nichols, and he's gone for one. Jacob Duffy will get the wicket of Boyle, so good stuff from the Otago Bowlers. They are showing absolute, absolute determination to get the team off to um, a positive start in this campaign. 33 for two after six. Uh, we'll bring in uh, Fulcher now, just with the field and that out. Obviously, you can sort of have that luxury of extra fielders out. And Fulcher's gone for four off his first over. And we'll bring Bickerton in, who bowled really well in the last game. Continue his development a wee bit. It's a wee bit expensive in that over, though. The free hit for Travis. Must be a run out here. Yeah, because we can't get anyone out of the free hit. Pretty happy with that because um, they were getting away a bit there, Canterbury. Bickerton will come out of the attack. We'll bring Hall in. Then we'll bring Bickerton back in a couple of overs time. So it's a pretty close game at the moment. 64 for 3 after 11. Need a few strikes. Can a young leggy um, pull off a wicket? 70 for 3 after 12. Decent over for um, Bickerton. Only 6 off it. It's another decent over. 43 runs at 6.1. It is fairly comfortable at the moment. 3 overs. None for 21 for Bickerton. Um, Hall into the attack now. Making Canterbury really work hard for this. 30 runs at 6. Uh, let's get Kitson back into the attack. Needle wicket will two this over if we can snag one. 16 off 24. There's the big over that they needed. And I think we're not going to be defending this total, sadly. So at the end of the day, didn't get enough on the board. We probably were 10 runs light. As Duffy picks up a wicket of Cole McConchie. And Duffy's picked up a wicket of Wiggins. It's decent decent effort from Canterbury they do get home comfortably in the 19th over Kim McClure top scoring McConchie and Travis supported well and yeah just wasn't quite there for us today um yeah good spells from Duffy 3 for 16 and Fulcher Bickerton bowled okay as well but yeah we start the campaign with one win and one loss um hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode and oh we've got some cavalry back uh philip sutherland fox rock williams and k are back k is pretty much um with the big bash side though so if 
they find it convincingly there. 89 all out, 2 for 10 for Williams. But yeah, it's going to be good to have some depth in that back. Uh, we got we will be back for the 20 over campaign. Obviously, we'll take on take on the um, pretty much how many games will we play in between? We'll play Auckland and then we'll play Canterbury again. So pretty much the last game of the year, 2026, and into 2027. So we'll see you guys then for more Otago Bolts cricket.